Hi, I'm Thomas Bosch from the University of Kiel in Germany. I talk about a paper which just got published in BioEssay entitled How do environmental factors influence life cycles and development? An experimental approach for early diverging metasomes. The paper is the outcome of an international workshop and my colleague David Miller and I were synthesizing the ideas from this workshop all workshop participants are listed as co-authors. The paper addresses a fundamental question in biology. How do environmental interactions affect developmental processes? And how does developmental evolution impact the environment? It is clear today that many embryos interact with the external environment and that both animal-encoded ontogeny and environmental inter interactions orchestrate development. But very little is known about the mechanisms behind. The paper is focused on animals which appeared on this earth and lived there successfully for the last 560 million years, the Cnidarians and the sponges. These animals diverged prior to the Bilateria and therefore they are considered the sister group to all Bilaterians. These animals are evolutionary success stories. They survived and they prospered in a constantly changing environment and they are living today in nearly every aquatic habitat. What factors have contributed to that success story? We don't know yet. But we know that development in these early emerging metasomes is strongly affected by environmental conditions. And we also know that these animals have evolutionarily conserved biochemical and molecular tools to sense and to deal with the environment. So by studying these early emerging animals, we may get answers to questions con concerning environment genome interactions, which may be of general importance. The paper discusses several examples where environmental factors have strong influence on developmental processes in Canadarians and sponges. One of them is metamorphosis, this key transition in the life cycle of many of these animals from, for example, a larvae to a polyp, which is strongly dependent on environmental situation, where a coral larvae decides to settle and for the next hundred years may make a coral colony is dependent on such environmental cues. Gametogenesis is in many cnidarians affected by temperature shifts. Stem cells in sponges get activated when there's temperature changes. Environment affects also the overall morphology and the tissue architecture of many corals. It makes a big difference if a coral lives in a sheltered environment or if the very same species, the very same genotype lives in an environment where, for example, there is high current and therefore these animals get very flat. And last but not least, there is a microenvironment consisting of stable associated microbes and intracellular photosynthetic symbionts, which is affecting developmental processes and the phenotype in cnidarians and sponges. These early emerging metasomes are, as all animals, including humans, holobionts. And we learn in the last decade that there is a tremendous influence on these stable associated symbiotic partners uh, with the host and the phenotype is dependent on which partner are you associated with. There is convincing evidence due to technical advances and large gene banks and genome projects that the pathways, how to deal with the environment and how to sense with the environment is evolutionarily conserved. I give you three examples. One is 
nutrient sensing. We know meanwhile that the mTOR pathway, this kinase complex, is from sponges to invertebrates to higher animals, including humans, one of the key factors which deals with the nutrient metabolism and the homeostasis with the nutrient environment. Members of the FOXO gene family ensure that transcription of certain genes is in homeostasis and in harmony with environmental conditions. The second example is bacterial sensing. This is a very a highly conserved pathway using the toll-like receptor complex, using highly conserved mediator and signal transducing molecules like MID88 and uh, complex kinase cascade, which mediates the interaction between the stable associated microbes and the host. And the last but least understood example is light sensing. We know that cnidarians and sponges have photoreceptors and also many circadian genes which seem to be highly conserved in the animal kingdom. We know that cnidarians and sponges react to light, they detect certain spectra of the moonlight for making key decisions in their life cycle. We know that transcriptional, transcriptional activity, DNA replication, is light dependent in corals. But we know very little how this really is done at the cellular and subcellular level. The environment interacts with developmental processes and in turn organisms change the world in which they are living and interacting. Corals are not only changing the world in which they are living, they are known as important ecosystem engineers. Cnidarians and sponges provide novel and exciting opportunities to understand the complex question of genome-environment in interaction because many of them can be cultured very easily and even clonally propagated because of the complex and vertebrate-like gene repertoire they have, much more complex than other model systems like Drosophila, C. elegans and Ziona. And last but not least, because of the possibility to genetically manipulate them, at least in the Cnidarians, doing loss of function and gain of function experiments for functional analysis of genes. So, in summary, given the basal position of these cnidarians and the sponges in the animal tree of life and the enormous technical advances which have been achieved in the last few years, it is our hope and also our expectation that these early emerging metazones will contribute to an understanding of the mechanisms, how environmental factors deal and interact with developmental mechanisms. Thank you for listening and enjoy reading the paper.